Hello, Star Wars unboxing fans. Making sure my mic's on. Good. Welcome to another edition of Star Wars Tuba's Star Wars unboxing show. I'm your host, Star Wars Tuba, with a conundrum. So if you've been watching the channel, you know that I have been doing a lot of different kind of things. I have had unboxings, but I've also been doing, you know, up to, you know, a whole Star Wars sale. And I do, in you know, plan on kind of having this channel do a very slow transition into selling off the collection and kind of documenting that okay i already had a follow-up about it i will tell you i want to do a quick follow-up to the follow-up and that is that uh i've been having a lot of people that came to the sale uh reach out to me via messaging if they had you know i had accepted payments like paypal and and venmo and they were able to message me via those apps and say hey is there is there a chance i can stop by again and they did and people stopped by and made purchases, additional purchases. So it was now, I believe, the number of uh, how much money that was made is actually very close to surpassing the year prior. So, of course, it, you know, it isn't a record. It, we made enough. It was fine. It was great. But I found it interesting, you know, to do this. And, and then, you know, in thinking about the fact that there hasn't been a lot of new items coming in. I mean, just p be plainly frank. I am only pretty much now purchasing uh, vintage collection items, okay? I'm only purchasing, meaning vintage collection figures, and they're not releasing a ton of them. Um, you know, not, not like the old days where you could walk into a store and, you know, buy 10 in one, one shot, you know? Um, they may release like one at a time, two, maybe as many as six. And uh, maybe a few weeks later, they release another six. I, I can't imagine. I'm gonna have to look. I'm sure there are other deal. There are other sites that can give you more accurate information. But I don't think there's more than a dozen to two dozen figures a year being released. And then, and now, by the way, that's pre-ordered, so they may not come until next year. So, do, do you count them when you pre-ordered them? Do you count when you actually receive them in hand? Probably in hand. So, that's that. Uh, the only other thing there's Disney items occasionally. Um, mostly when I'm actually down in the parks. Uh, in Florida, and again, I will say, maybe California, there may be an upcoming excursion, we'll see, but we, um, you know, in looking at, you know, we've, we've been spending so much time, I've been spending so much time sharing with you the removal of items, things are getting taken off the shelves and put it out for the sale, and um, a lot of the stuff sold, some of it didn't, and that stuff got stored for next year's sale. And except for a handful, handful of larger items that I felt were better off being put back in the displays here for a year, and then we'll take them back out next year. Then I was thinking about, okay, there's Sideshow slash Hot Toys. Um, I don't order all of them. I order maybe one or two a year, and I make the flex payments on them, and then they come when they come. So it left me thinking, like, I am starting to run out of things to unbox. I mean, I've gone through quite a bit of the things that I were, was comfortable Things that I had in a box, purchased earlier, that I was happy to unbox on the channel. But now I've done some research and realized that I really need to seriously reconsider doing that for some of the items. Having said that, I um, I'm not I'm, I'm okay with it. I just you know th there are also less items coming in. You know the, when you know and sure enough the math comes out. The less stuff that comes in, the less stuff to unbox. So now I'm kind of going through what I've had and I said okay. What can I unbox? I want to still do some unboxing, you know, but I, I can't constantly be waiting for stuff to come because I'm not buying every black. I'm not buying any black series. I might go back on what I said. Like originally, I know I'm babbling. You can fast forward if you want. But originally, my thought was, okay, I'll only un unbox the black. I'll only purchase the black series that they don't make vintage collection versions of. So I can have kind of one of every figure they make. But I've kind of blown that out of the water in removing all my comic packs and some of my battle packs because I've gotten rid of a lot of trooper figures, a lot of like, you know one-offs from comic books that I never read or video game figures. And I said, okay, so maybe it's just characters from, from uh, visual media, meaning movies and TV streaming. Okay, fine. The problem is that Hu Yang is a perfect example. I bought Hu Yang. I put I placed an order for Hu Yang pre-order as a black series figure because they didn't announce him originally as a three and three quarter inch. So now, you know, what happens a few months later? They announce him as a three and three quarter inch figure, and I then say, okay, I canceled my order for the black series. All right. 
Um, all the Black Series loose figures that I put out in the sale were mainly gaming figures or, you know, paint apps on troopers. You know, but there's a lot of face characters of, of significant characters from the streaming service and, and the um, um, movies that have come out. So I'm kind of in a bit of a rocky place. Like, I don't know if I want to sell those yet. What I think I might do is, like, kind of wait a little while. Like, hold those figures for a bit and then see if they make them into Vintage Collection, which I know they've done for some. And I'll kind of cross-check and then I'll move the loose figures into the sell boxes for next year. But, the, you know, now there's also being on the front end, what do I do? Do I just buy them all and then, you know, wait? Wait it out? No. What I'll do instead is I will buy them. I won't buy them. I will keep an eye on them. I'll make a list of things that are that are all unique figures and then I will go to the um, you know toy shows and things like that after the fact a year later two years later even three years later I'll play the long game and I'll see which figures were mass produced and therefore are now being discounted you know if there's any discounts on any entertainment earth or things like that and I'll try to you know pick up a few black series figures that way so that's my plan with that okay but I'm still at a loss of what ideas should I do? What what things should I unbox? Is there anything I left to unbox? I think there is. So I did a little looking around and I found four items that I think I'm comfortable unboxing, at least partially. And one of them just came into the collection recently and that is this baby. This is the Gentle Giant R2-D2 Droid Factory um, R2. Okay, now for those who might not know what this is, might look like any other R2. Obviously, Gentle Giant has had the jumbo figures and I will tell you, the jumbo figures are getting close to being next on the selling block. Okay, not the chopping block. I'm not chopping anything up. But I might start considering grabbing not all of them, but just like one here, one there, and uh, start looking into maybe just reserving those for my absolute favorite vintage figure of all time and selling off the rest because they made like 70 of them. So, well, they made about 60, 64 of the original, and then I started making the retro ones, like the new retro that didn't exist in the vintage line. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. That's gonna be scary. So I was, I didn't, I jumped into that. I dipped my toe into it a little bit and then I said, no, I'm not gonna do it anymore. But this one I found interesting. I've always had a thing for the Droid Factory. I did a few episodes, I actually purchased an old Droid Factory really to just gather parts from it to restock my original droid factory because that thing had like 47 pieces and it's so easy to lose them they get sucked up in the vacuum really easily especially those really strong 1978 79 vacuums so i um instead i uh, you know I, I just kind of you know bought a new one and tried or not a new one but i bought one that was used it was a very good price and i just kind of separated then i sold it sold the piece off on ebay but i found this at a toy show a couple of weeks ago and i'm like huh this is kind of cool. So I do want to unbox this one because I, I mean, I love the box. So I might keep them both together because unlike all the other figures um, that come in the big carded thing, this, this, this figure never actually had a card. It was solely a loose, um, it was a loose item. It came with the set inside the droid factory box. And I doubt they're gonna make a jumbo version of that. So I decided let's take this one out and see what we got. Um, I believe this is a, this was a, uh, an exclusive of some kind at some type of like Comic-Con or something. Oh, sorry, Diamond Select. So I believe it's that. So, but what I love about this, I don't know if this comes off. No, it doesn't. It does have its little head turn. But this was the R2. Basically, it's mostly the R2 that we know from the, from the 70s and 80s vintage line but it included a third leg. They basically took the R2 mold and added a third leg. Now, when you look at it, and I'll kind of use the base here, when you look at it, it does look rather unusual, okay? Why? Because, you know, the R2 that they were using it, basing it on the original R2, you know, which is this guy right here, you know, this R2 doesn't really um, you know, it, it was just meant to be a two-legged R2. So if you try to make it a third leg, you got to move, you know, you remember normally the feet in uh, new R2s, which I will demonstrate here. Let's all take a look. With the new R2, you, they actually have a little joint 
right at the bottom with the feet. So you don't have to bend it back too far. It's just you have to bend it back a little and then you can pull out the other foot and then it's more, that is more kind of like what a regular astromech droid looks like, okay? With these kind of R2s, if you try to do that and these legs are um, stationary, they don't bend, they don't tilt, you build that like this, it's almost like a cannon, <laughs> you know, it's like, so in order for these to stay flat, look how far R2, you know, how far R2 has to angle out. And then they created that third leg and it's pretty big. So it's not fully accurate um, in the sense of what the R2 really looked like, which is fine, it doesn't have to be. That's what was great about the old vintage 70s and 80s figures, they didn't have to be accurate. They just had to be a reasonable facsimile. And we, and our imaginations did the rest. So this is a great reminder of that. Um, if I do sell off most of my Gentle Giant, I will keep a few key, key pieces. Probably the original 12, you know, the 12 backs, as many of them that I have. I know some of them come on Empire Strikes Back boxes and that kind of thing. And I might keep this R2 just because it's, it's cute. And I love the box design that they did specifically for this release. So again, maybe not movie accurate, but fun nonetheless. All right, so we'll put him over here to kind of watch over the side. The other ones I want to unbox is a partial unboxing. I want to unbox the three, the Bounty Hunter sets. You know, I was thinking about it and the retro collection, right? We're talking about the little sticker retro collection. I calculated that they made, they released 29 figures Plus, I can't remember if all six of these were within that 29. I got to look at the count. I think they might have been. Um, so 29 figures, which is not a huge amount. You know, it would have been 30, but they, Hasbro slash Kenner, included Mon Mothma in the latest Return of the Jedi wave, which was not a figure that was originally there. So there was five original, you know, reproductions in that pack instead of six. Five plus Mon Mothma, right? So... We're at roughly 29, uh, and again, I gotta look at the Empire Strikes Back thing here and see what the, um, I know Boba Fett was, was released, um, and I thought I saw a few of the other ones. So uh, let's, although it couldn't have been all of them, because I unless they did two releases, I have to look. But anyway, I just wanna kinda put these out there. Um, if, I'm not gonna take them out of their original cards, all right? Um, I mean, these are not gonna be of excessive value, but, um, I just, I do like that they created a box like this, and then they had two retro collection figures like Boba Fett, which I know was already released, and Bosk. I can't remember if Bosk was. I'll have to look. I will put a little comment at the bottom uh, of how many actual retro figures there are at the time of this recording. I'm, I'm, I'm like kind of hoping they make more and kind of not. I don't want them, I mean, I can't imagine that they're going to make Imperial Dignitary. I, I mean, or, or, or a Man of Man, or, um, you know, I, I, I just don't know. I don't think they're going to do it. But, you know, again, they do with the retro side. They do the, the distressed card. You look on the figure, there's a, de there's some, there's some for the, to the keen eye, there are subtle differences. And, you know, so that there's no way any true collector would confuse these, especially in the card. Um, but even out of the card, they would confuse these with original figures, even though they look very, very similar. But um, nonetheless, you know, there's there's those two, Boba Fett and Bosk. And then we have <laughs> Zuckus and 4LOM, which again, I think I might have actually unboxed this one. Yeah, I did, because it was already undone. Um, you gotta love, I've already unboxed this one, but I just wanted to show it again. You gotta love that they went with the, the, the same incorrect names. I love it. For those who don't know, this is actually 4LOM. This is actually Zuckus. Kenner screwed up the names. Which is really funny because this is a droid, and 4LOM sounds like a droid name, but they made him Zuckus, and they made him 4LOM. And I did not question it as a kid. I just went with it that that was 4LOM, and that was Zuckus, and that, to this day, I still see Zuckus and 4LOM. I don't see the reverse, so. But again, same thing, distress card, looking good. Now this one I did not unbox yet, because I wasn't really concerned about name screw-ups. 
But I also like to unbox these because they're sort of unboxings, but they're not really. You know, I'll put them back in here. I can take them out now and look at them as I want. And there we have, of course, IG88 and Dengar. So we have the full six pack of now completed of Bounty Hunters. We don't need that scum. There we go. Again, distress card, great figures. What I always loved about um, Star Wars figures in the 70s and 80s, and, and, you know, to this day too, but back then it was just so cool to see so many, you know, you could see very different types of figures. They weren't all just like, you know, X-Wing bodies with different heads. You know what I mean? Or, or, or Stormtrooper bodies just painted differently. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, dissing Hasbro for doing anything like that now. I think they give us a lot of figures too that are separate, that are different. But it's just nice to, you know, back then they seemed to really just, they didn't care. It was just bup, 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 all the way down the line. They were just different shapes, different body shapes, heights, you know. So it was really cool. So this is really neat. Um, I know it's not much of an unboxing. And as I said, what will come next? I don't know. I do have a few items. I mean, I get that little update from Entertainment Earth. And they say, oh, yeah, we have all these orders. And there's a lot of orders. But, you know, they ship them one at a time, you know, and I don't like to do an unboxing with just one figure, you know, so I, so I intend to wait a few, wait it out a little bit. But I will tell you that before I end the episode that this is, um, these are pre-recorded episodes um, leading up to some traveling that I will be doing, okay? Uh, I'm going to iron out and map out what's going on in my life personally, just so you are aware, okay? Okay. Um, as a teacher, I do get off in the summer, not the full summer. I have, I'm a band director and we have a lot of marching band activity in the, in the late summer, in August. This part of the country is off basically all of June and all of, sorry, all of July and all of August. A little bit of June and a very early part of September till Labor Day. Um, but there's things that go on in August that keep me, you know, tethered and working and that's okay. You know, I, I like what I do, I love what I do and it's okay. But July, I do tend to travel. Um, it's what I love to do, uh, specifically down to Florida, um, but mainly because our daughter works down there, or should I say worked down there until the end of this coming July. She is actually returning. Um, she's uh, returning to take a job up here and close to home. She misses us. We miss her, which is really cool. And uh, we're happy that she'll be coming back. And uh, she'll still be working as an artist um, with the company she's in, but just working remotely and doing other artistic endeavors, you know, on the side while working kind of a quote unquote day job that um, she's looking forward to. So we're real happy to have her back. Um, this will not change the long trip that I do in July. Uh, we will continue to be doing this for future trips. Uh, future summers and I, there may be less trips if you've watched the channel you've heard me say well we're going on another trip this december we may be going on another trip this april da, 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 da. there there will still be some of those probably one or two less than normal um you know i think i think the last couple of years we've gone on average five or six times each year that's probably not going to be the case we'll probably go maybe two or three times you know that type of thing um which i'm fine with it, it you know again a lot of the reason we went down was to be closer to our daughter and now she's coming up here so that will be a moot point but this coming summer as 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 a time of this recording there's a lot going on we have um we're taking we, we we're taking our trip down staying with our daughter for a couple of days before we do a, a disney cruise that will be on the disney wish um and uh i love the disney wish because there's not one but two awesome star wars representations there there's the hyperspace lounge which is the uh, kind of like a, a, a bar slash lounge that is really really cool and it's it's great for especially for those of us who went on the halcyon because there's a there's a few halcyon starship style vehicles kind of on uh, you know out out of the spaceport there you can see and it's kind of fun um i'll do some videoing of that okay i've done it before but i like to just kind of update it there's also a, a you know children's area where they have a really cool kind of creature stall with all these different creatures and everything. And it's kind of a, you know, you, as adults, we can go in the opening of the ship when the ship first docks and we're entering the ship for the first time. Um, we, we're, we have the first day we're allowed to kind of go and check it out. And it is a lot of fun. And, and yeah, I don't need more than that. It's cool to just go down there and check it out. And then we've checked it out. So I'll make sure I document that again. And then after the cruise, we are going to be down in Florida staying at Pop Century Resort for a while. There will be plenty of trips to 
uh, Galaxy's Edge to Batu, Black Spire Outpost, and I plan on doing some recorded videos, and I may even try a live stream. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll see if I can get that working. I haven't really done it that much, but I might give it a shot. Um, then, so just kind of keep, a, you know, subscribe to the channel. Those of you that check it out on Instagram or things like that, I might try an Instagram live. I might, you know, we'll, we'll play around with it, but I would recommend you get to the YouTube channel itself and actually subscribe. Um, because if you do that, then if you, then I'll, when I create an announcement or if I go live, you'll get, and if you hit that notification button, you'll get in, you know, word on that. And maybe we'll just kind of do a walk around Batu together. And then, um, That'll be for a few days. We transfer to our DVC home resort, which is the uh, Beach Club, and we do that for about a week. And then at the very end of July, we um, we come home for one day, and then we're flying out to California to have a Disneyland trip. And uh, that that's something I'm very excited for because I want to check out Batu West. I want to check out. This will be my first time seeing. Disneyland's version of Galaxy's Edge. And I know it's mostly the same. I probably won't ride Rise of the Resistance or Millennium Falcon, but the rest of the place is a little different. There's different product, there's different food items, there's different drinks. They tend to roll out more different options. So I'm looking forward to sampling all of that and I'll definitely try to do some, some uh, recording of that and sharing that with you. So we got plenty of content coming on. I'm gonna try my best to have enough content that'll continue to allow us to release episodes Sundays and Wednesdays throughout the time we're gone. But um, I don't know if that will happen. So I will, you know, if I don't get something out there, perhaps I'll, I'll put a really short video of something or I'll do a live instead. I don't know, we'll see, okay? But uh, thank you for your patience with that and I uh, look forward to it. So uh, lots of different uh, Star Wars adventures coming, more of a travel, travel vlog over the next couple of weeks. But then, you know, there'll probably be a few items that I'll purchase and they'll, they'll result in unboxings after the fact. Because one of the things I do with this, with this big Star Wars sale is I take some of the money from there and buy a few high-end items. I get, I build a lightsaber at Savi's. I build a droid at the Droid Depot. And maybe pick up a few other items that are in Dhaka and Dars in one of the other places. So I'm looking forward to sharing all that with you. And then we'll see what happens after that. So thank you so much for watching. And check me out on Instagram at X, Darth Suba's Star Wars unboxing page on Facebook. And thank you to Red5 for supporting the channel. Check out all of the Red5 content. Until next time, may the Force and the toys be with you.